dear students in this class we will look at about the nucleus and then about the nuclear envelope or nuclear membrane first one is nucleus nucleus is the most essential part of the cell actually it is the one which directs and controls all cellular activities all metabolic activities it can be compared to a control room in a factory or factory kuda compare panni pathina control room factory ki evlo important no and the mari cell ku nucleus is so much important it was first discovered by robert brown the next point are related with the occurrence how it is present there in the nature a well organized nucleus with a distinct nuclear membrane is commonly absent in bacteria and viruses that is a differentiating feature between these two broad groups of organisms that is prokaryote and eukaryotes prokaryotes are those that lack a distinct nuclear membrane whereas eukaryotes are one that have a distinct nuclear membrane all other living organisms have a nucleus in their cell that is all eukaryotes should be having on their basis biologists have separated the living organisms into the groups what i have earlier told now we look at into the number of nucleus it can be a single nucleus or multiple nucleus that are present in the cells okay first we look at the a nuclear condition without nucleus also some cells are there how it could be possible it is present for some period after that it will be vanishing those examples include rbc's of mammals sieve tubes of vascular plants that completely lack the nucleus that is the reason why these cells no longer can able to divide and their life span will be limited mononucleate it is the one which a single nucleus have been present binucleate is the one in which two nuclei will be present per cell example for a binucleate condition is paramecium it will be having two nucleus one is a micronucleus and another one is a macronucleus micronucleus serves as a source for heredity information that is carried on to the next generation whereas macronucleus is the one which governs the total metabolic activities of a cell multinucleate multinucleate refers to many nuclei multinucleate condition in plants or microorganisms such as fungi are referred by the term cenocyte because in those cells boundaries will be lacking you just look at this image which shows the septate hyphae as well as cenocytic kind of a hyphae that could be present there in the fungi as i already told in a cenocytic hyphae one in which there is no any specific septa formation and multiple nuclei has been present throughout the cell this is a common feature of the earliest group of fungi such as the rhizopus muca they are all will be having the cenocytic hyphae however if you look at into the septate hyphae in which the nuclei are separated by septa you can able to see the septa walls okay so this is a condition which is resulted in the higher order fungi such as a penicillium aspergillus they are all will be commonly having a septate kind of a hyphae apart from fungi they can be present there in certain algae also houcheria is a kind of a algae in which a cenocytic condition could be seen apart from this fungi and plant system this kind of cenocytic condition could be resulted there in the animal tissues or in animal cells also that it is referred by an analogous term called as a synchytial condition the striated muscle fibers and epidermis of ascaris are commonly found to have synchytial condition that is a multinucleate condition there the other points are related with shape and size of the nucleus nucleus are generally round in shape however the shape will be differing based on the cell types sometimes they can be of a cylindrical elliptical horseshoe shaped or lobed there are multi lobed nucleus containing cells are also there say for example trilobed nucleus are present in the neutrophils however a highly branched nucleus are present there in the silkworm 
that are involved in the spinning cells of the insect larva. So this is an image which shows a bilobed nucleus condition, the eosinophil, and more three lobes there in the basophil, and more than three lobes, that is a condition of the neutrophils. Even a lens-shaped nucleus could be present there in the amoeba cells. These are all the other types. Say for example, smooth muscles will have an elongated nucleus whereas a moniliform kind of a nucleus will be present there in the stentor cells. Stentor is actually a ciliate. It's a kind of a protozoa. Even branched nucleus could be found there in the living cell. Say for example, silk spinning insect larval cell found to have highly branched nucleus as shown there in the image. The size of the nucleus varies with the organisms and with the different species and even depending upon the types of the cells in an organism. Nucleus usually occupying a central position of the cell but may be shifted to one side when some other structures such as a vacuole were present, especially there in the plant cells. Now we look at the structure of the nucleus. What are the other structures that have been associated there in the nucleus? Interface nucleus is the one which can be distinguished into the following structures that includes a delimiting nuclear envelope or nuclear membrane, the ground substance called as a nucleoplasm, the nuclear reticulum or chromatin net. It is the level at which the DNA is being arranged there in the cell which is called as a chromatin net and finally the nucleolar structure. Now we will look at each and every structure that has been listed above. The first one is a nuclear envelope. It is also called as a karyotheca structure. It is the one it was named after Anderson as a nuclear envelope. It was first described as a nuclear membrane. It is formed of two membranes that have been separated by a fluid filled perinuclear space that goes to a 150 Armstrong wide. So this is the one that have been shown here in this image. Okay. So you can able to see the nuclear envelope or nuclear membrane. The nuclear membrane is a unit membrane model and the nuclear membrane can be seen as an outer nuclear membrane and an inner nuclear membrane. The unit membrane model is something similar to that of the plasma membrane. The outer membrane bears ribosome. Sometimes you can able to see the ribosomes attached there to the outer membrane. The dot like structures are actually the ribosomes that have been attached to the outer membrane. If you closely observe, the perinuclear space is continuous with the lumen of the endoplasmic reticulum. In the topmost side of the diagram, you can able to see the perinuclear space is continuous with that of the endoplasmic reticulum. The next one is nuclear pores. The nuclear membrane is not a continuous structure whereas it has been perforated. Small micro pores have been present. Even that would be around 600 to 1000 Armstrong in diameter. Nuclear pore can be seen here. Okay. So this is the structure of the nuclear pore. Now we will look at the functions of the nuclear envelope. It isolates the nuclear material from the cell cytoplasm that is the nucleus content are all separated there from the cell cytoplasm and it maintains the shape of the nucleus. It regulates the passage of ions, macromolecules, macromolecules to and fro between the cytoplasm and nucleus. This can be regarded as a nucleocytoplasmic exchanges. The next one is nuclear matrix. It is a network of fine crisscross fibrils formed of protein. Sometimes it can be referred as a nuclear lamina as it is made up of a particular protein called as a lamin protein which actually provides a strength there to the nucleus. It remains intact even after the chromatin portion and DNA has been removed there from the nucleus. Functions of the nuclear matrix is to form a nuclear skeleton. So this is a cytoskeleton is existing for the cell. A nucleoskeleton which is made up of a special protein called lamin is the one which provides support and anchor to the chromatin fibers. It provides support to the nucleus to maintain its shape as well as the size. The total nuclear activities 
that have been involved in the replication and transcription are also associated there with the matrix. The next one is nuclear sap or nucleoplasm or karyolymph. These are all the synonymous words for it. It is a transparent semi-fluid ground substance formed of mixture of proteins, enzymes, DNA, RNA polymerases, phosphorus, nucleotides and some nucleic acids, metal ions that are involved in the synthesis of DNA and RNA. It also found to contain the histone and non-histone protein that are involved there in the makeup of nucleosomes. Now we look at the functions of the nuclear sap. It is a one which supports the chromatin material that have been present there in the nucleus. It provides the rigidity there for the nucleus. It is the seat for synthesis of DNA, RNA as well as the ribosomal subunit. The next structure is nucleolus. It appears as a spherical refringent body in the nucleoplasm of all the eukaryotic cells mainly during the interface. It was first described by Fontana in 1781. Nucleolus is commonly associated there with a specific region of a particular chromosome. This specific region is also known as nucleolar organizing region. That is the one in which the nucleolus will be present. Normally two nuclei are present in each diploid cell. Many nucleoli were also found in certain active cells. Nucleolus are again divided into four distinct zones. I am just naming the zones. I am not going to go interior. If possible, you can separately read about the details of the various zones. The first one is the granular zone which is lies in the periphery of the nucleus. The fibrillar zone which are mainly made up of fibrils that are made up of 5 to 10 nanometer thickness. Amorphous zone, it is the one which is rich in proteinaceous background. And finally, the nuclear associated chromatin, it is the one which found to contain the regions of rRNA, mainly the 28S as well as 18S rRNA regions. Now, we look at the functions of the nucleolus. The primary function of nucleolus is to synthesize the rRNA of the cell. It facilitates the biogenesis of the ribosome subunits and nucleolus is the one which plays an important role there in the cell division. So, you can able to see the four zones what I have narrated early there in this diagram also.